Hello YouTube. <clears throat> I was going to make a quick video. Um, this will be called something update Jesus is coming. Um, I kind of want to get rid of my latest video being ones called Am I Jesus? Because it's beginning to bother me a bit. Of course I'm not. <clears throat> And last night, I saw a sign that Jesus is coming. Jesus being the light, the Son of God. Because God made the light first, then that's like his firstborn, isn't it? Anyway, so, <clears throat> last night, I um, had a little dinner party. <laughs> Can call it that. My brother and his wife and my friend Lucy came over and after they left I was sitting outside looking at the sky, my favourite spot, and I suddenly saw, because it's quite starry sky, and I suddenly saw this like cloud come in, like a, a triangular shaped chemtrail, so like that sort of shape and it coming out the sky like that and if you look at my previous videos um, the great deception Nibiru is here then I'm talking about debris from space <clears throat> and how they want to hide that and they stick the odd chemtrail up so that people just go oh it's chemtrails and then they don't question What's these clouds? Where are they coming from? Are they come from space? <clears throat> anyway, so so this cloud suddenly appeared, and it looked initially it looked like a, hard to describe, but quite a mathematical shape, like a that sort of you know <laughs> great rift shape with like lines in it and stuff and then as they do they get bigger because they're coming in from space and they elongate right back across the sky and this one was then looking like a dart and then it changed as clouds do and the bottom bit looked like feet and it looked like this basically Feet really pointy, and a man with sackcloth round his groin, like that. Couldn't see the face too clearly, but it was a sort of a... It was like, you could imagine Jesus was diving in with his feet, coming in, he's going to... And those feet of his going to hit something. Now my impression was that cloud obviously didn't bring Jesus, but it was like a sign. It was like a sign that it's coming. Just to hang on in there because he is coming. And this probably means another year, <laughs> another year wait. Because, you know, we've got to learn to be patient, haven't we? But we get these signs to make us stronger through the times when it seems like it may not happen. <clears throat> so that that was that that I wanted to share with you. Um, now the <coughs> the other update is I'm going to be doing a talk in Banbury on the 23rd of September. It's ages away, isn't it? Um, I have to try and sell tickets because obviously people don't put on these events if no money is involved so it's five pounds a ticket I've got to sell ten to make sure that the event goes ahead and it's called the talk I'm doing is called surviving the 21st century <clears throat> um, and I've, I've written some things down which I might just try out on you 
Now I think I'm going to start it off with, like, love is the answer, thank you, good night. <laughs> Thanks for your five pounds. Pop it. Got any questions? You know, it is. It is the answer. It's just understanding love to its full potential to realise that it's the answer. Because if you say to most people love is the answer, then they think they have to meet someone of the opposite sex or even same sex, settle down and be happy ever after. That's not why I'm saying it at all. For example, there is the love of, the, of another partner, which is these days is usually more lust than love. But then you've got love of family, brothers, fathers, mothers, or best friends even, you know, that sort of love. That is a stronger love, I'd say. And then you have an even stronger love, which is the love of life, the love of God, the love of existence, the love of the now. And that's the most powerful. And if you're feeling that love, then you'll also be emanating that love to others as you, perhaps just in their, in their area, you know, or walking past them, giving them a smile, because you're more likely to give someone a smile if you're feeling that sort of love. So that, that is it, as simple, simple as that. Now, because we've been brainwashed <clears throat> um, all of our lives, this um, the people in power have been um, ruling for six thousand years, I believe. Now I've said that word, haven't I? Belief. So I'm just going to read this so we can. Sorry. It's like, it doesn't start that great, as usual. I recently heard an opinion that it is wrong to have beliefs, just have ideas. Although I've said beliefs are important as they affect the decisions you make, it is unwise to be too certain as you beco could become closed-minded. The truth is we can't help having beliefs, as our belief drives us through the days. When you work towards what you believe is a good cause, you work with enthusiasm, and the opposite is also true. Unfortunately, people seem... Unfortunately, majority of people seem to be duped into the belief that buying stuff makes you happy and that money is the answer to all. This affects the way they live, their whole life becoming more and more obsessed by money that they lose all track of the real meaning of life. And the answer to that is love. Love of life, the eternal now, and that we're all one. Yeah, you see, that's an important one. The old Rastas, they say, I and I, meaning I am you and you are me. And when you have that philosophy, that belief, and you're not going to be unkind to anyone else because it's like being unkind to yourself. <clears throat> With this belief, you can start the path to truly evolve into a being that uses six senses. But that sixth sense is really a lot more. We are only touching on the tip of the iceberg. What is happening here is truly amazing. It is the cosmos becoming conscious i.e. our bodies are made of stardust, but as living beings sustain a soul, and the stardust starts to comprehend what it is, and thereby starts to get access to the sixth sense. Why? Because you are aware then that there is something else. So, as soon as you know it in your mind, you will start to become aware of it. Instincts, inspirations, and knowing. These come from your, call it, subconscious. It can be feelings or visions. It is all-knowing, and you must trust in it. It comes quick, like a flash. And I'll just add in here, voices usually 
a no-no. If you get voices in your head telling you something, ask angels to rid you of any demons that might be hanging around. And they will. And if you want to see angels or demons, look out for the little sparks of light that you see in your vision from time to time. Well, this is what I've been noticing. Um, for example, I was sitting watching a film, a Godfather, and it was coming up to a bit where the Godfather was making a speech. And imagine it's probably quite a famous speech, you know, you could tell people would sort of take quotes from it. And a few seconds before that came on, I definitely sensed um, some beings or souls or whatever come in to watch what I was watching. And right before that, I had the taps of light which I saw in my mind, in my eye, that someone was joining me. And I don't know this for the moment yet, but <clears throat> I think if their colour is ranging from sort of yellow to red, then they might be bad entities. But if the colour is sort of white to blue, then they are good entities. That's just theory at the moment. I haven't tested it fully enough. But I've had times when I've seen a red one, and then I've asked angels to rid me of any demons, and sort of a white and a blue one or something came. and So it's still in the test period, but yeah, see, it's pretty awesome. Right, so... <clears throat> I just touched on there, your instincts, inspirations, and when you know something, you just know it. Okay, th so this is your access to the subconscious. It'll be dull and cloudy most of the time. And reducing toxic fluoride and aluminium is important if you want to make it less cloudy and dull. Meditation is necessary to force open the doors bit by bit to start exp experiencing the sensation of the sixth sense. It is also important to be able to go back to your childhood and remember to know your young self. Go back in stages if you can't just leap back. I think I was about mid-twenties when I thought, God, I can really struggle remembering being nine or something. And I thought it was inaccessible in a way. Well, I never did, but... So, so yeah, I went back sort of year by year, slowly by slowly, and that time when I did that, I went right back to when I was six and we just moved into our new house, and I had a memory come back to me that I hadn't remembered in between time. And because it was so fresh, it had everything. It had the temperature, the smell, everything was there in that memory. And I was able to remember exactly what it was like to be me at the age of six. <clears throat> so, yeah, things are. I've got more things written down, but I've got to work on it. So um, that's it for now. So two things: Jesus is coming. Get into your subconscious, and uh, we'll all. Um, Evolve. Okay, thanks, bye.